Today is the 13th day of Christmas, but it's also the Sunday nearest the 12th night. And the 12th night is when traditionally the decorations come down for us, while in other parts of the world, it's when Christmas is celebrated. The Orthodox Church, for example, which follows the Julian calendar, celebrates Christmas today, as do the people of Fula. In the church calendar, though, the 12th day of Christmas is known as Epiphany. And Epiphany celebrates two things, the baptism of Jesus and the arrival of the wise men. So come, let us continue to adore him. Lord Jesus, help us to walk with you into this day and into whatever lies ahead, trusting that you came knowing what we do not and trusting too that you will never abandon us. When we worry about what the future holds, reassure us that you have it covered. When we make plans and think we can sort things out by ourselves, draw us back to you and remind us that you are the one who should take the lead. Help us to be the followers you want us to be. And whenever we make mistakes, forgive us, we pray. Whenever we let you down or turn from you, let your patient understanding dust us down to start with you all over again. And thank you, Lord. Thank you for being so reassuringly dependable. Thank you for being the rock upon whom we can safely stand. You are far more than any of us could ever deserve. Praise you. Hear us now, we pray, as together we pray the words that you taught your friends, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Jesus was born in the town of Bethlehem in Judea during the time when Herod was king. Soon afterward, some men who studied the stars came from the east to Jerusalem and asked, where is the baby born to be king of the Jews? We saw his star when it came up in the east and we have come to worship him. When King Herod heard about this, he was very upset. And so was everyone else in Jerusalem. He called together all the chief priests and the teachers of the law and asked them, where will the Messiah be born? In the town of Bethlehem in Judea, they answered, for this is what the prophet wrote. Bethlehem in the land of Judah, you are by no means the least of the leading cities of Judah, for from you will come a leader who will guide my people Israel. So Herod called the visitors from the east to a secret meeting and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem with these instructions. Go and make a careful search for the child, and when you find him, let me know, so that I too may go and worship him. And so they left, and on their way they saw the same star they had seen in the east. When they saw it, how happy they were, what joy was theirs. It went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. They went into the house, and when they saw the child with his mother Mary, they knelt down and worshipped him. They brought out their gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh, and presented them to him. Then they returned to their country by another road, since God had warned them in a dream not to go back to Herod. The clues, the clues were all there. For the visitors from the east, the biggest clue came at night. They were stargazers and they'd found an unusual star that not only caught their attention, but that compelled them to follow it. These visitors were convinced that this star was special and that it pointed to something significant. They believed it pointed to the birth of the king of the Jews. So they packed up all their things and set about tracking the star to see where it might lead. But these guys were smart guys. They were well-educated. They were used to thinking for themselves and thinking things through. In their heads, the logical thing to do was to head for Jerusalem because that was the center of the Jewish faith and life. Surely if a Jewish king was to be born, then it was more than likely he'd be born in the thick of things and in the most important and significant place, and that would be Jerusalem. And besides, that was where the palace was. That had to be their first port of call. So off they set. The fact that the travellers were welcomed into the palace gives us a clue as to what kind of standing they must have had because regular people don't usually rock up to a palace and expect to meet with whoever lives there. These men came from a friendly country, probably modern day Iran. So they weren't seen as a threat and they were so well dressed and so well spoken that they were recognized as important. So King Herod, who was usually pretty brutal, even with his own family, if he felt they were again him, Herod welcomed them in and he listened to their story. The men talked of the pieces of the puzzle they were trying to put together. They knew the star was significant. They knew a king had been born. They'd assumed that they would find him in the palace in Jerusalem. But here they were in that palace and the child wasn't there. So what was it they had missed? King Herod didn't like what he was hearing, not in the least. He was king. Nobody else was going to replace him. He had a vested interest in solving this mystery. And so he called together all his counsellors and experts in the law, as well as the chief priests, and asked them where they thought such a child might be born. Herod's advisors were quick to tell him, well, we think this could be the one that the prophet Michael was hinting at when he spoke of someone who
who would come to guide God's people. Micah mentioned a little town called Bethlehem. Perhaps the baby might be there. This is what Micah said. Bethlehem in the land of Judah, you are by no means the least of the leading cities of Judah, for from you will come a leader who will guide my people Israel. All Herod wanted now was to get rid of the child. So he called the visitors in again, and with no one else there to hear their conversation, he asked the travellers when the star had first appeared. And once he had that information, he sent them on their way with the clear instruction that when they found the baby, they were to return to the palace to let Herod know so that he too could go and pay his respects. Mm. And with another clue revealed and the star in sight once more, the stargazers made their way to Bethlehem, where the star finally stopped. Their mission was complete. They had found the child and they offered him their gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. And then one more piece fell into place. The visitors, realising that Herod's intentions were not the best, headed back home via a route that completely avoided Jerusalem, while Herod, while Herod started on a mission of his own. He had done his sums and worked out the possible age of the child based on when that star had first appeared. He sent out an order for every boy child under two to be killed, the massacre of the innocent. The thing about puzzles is, well, they're puzzling, aren't they? The answer might be there, but it's not always obvious, and it's not always what you think it might be either. What's impressive about the wise men or the kings is that they were not afraid to explore the possibilities and even to get things wrong. They didn't let detours and wrong turns put them off, and even more importantly, as they travelled, they kept their minds open, which is easier said than done. If you think 
of all those experts in the law that King Herod called upon to ask where the baby might be born, these experts had been sitting on that clue about the birth of their leader for decades, centuries even, but they hadn't paid that much attention to it. How come? Probably because they had their own ideas of what their king or their messiah would be like. And while Bethlehem might well have featured in that thinking, foreigners coming to tell them of their Lord's arrival very definitely did not. Why on earth would God use outsiders to tell God's people of the birth of their saviour? Why on earth would God use people who were not even Jewish to tell them of the arrival of the one person who was most important to Jews. Those experts and faith leaders thought that they had and they knew all the answers. And so with minds closed to everything else, they dismissed the travelers from the East, along with the important clue those travelers offered to the good news those experts and every other Jew had been longing for good news about the arrival of the one who would save and rescue them. And that was even before they learned where the baby was born and who he was born to. The fact that this star-heralded child was born in a stable to an ordinary and very young couple just put the tin lid on things for the experts. Why would God choose to do such a thing? Why would God entrust his own to a couple of teenagers without the means to care for him as he deserved? The whole idea was ridiculous. Now, it's really tempting to want to ridicule those religious leaders. But the trouble is, we all do what they did. We all make up our minds about what we think God thinks and shut out any other possibilities. We seem to forget that God's thoughts go way beyond any of our thoughts. And we seem to forget too that in fact, if history proves anything, it is that God is not a God who can ever be described as predictable. God repeatedly does the most unexpected, the most amazing, the most shocking and mind-blowing things that no one could ever have foreseen. People of faith, even now though, can become so entrenched in their views, in our views of who we think God is and what God does and is about, that God has to turn to others to get things done and to get his message out. Perhaps that's part of the reason that the Church of Scotland is in the mess it's in right now. We have stopped looking for God to surprise us. And we have operated on the assumption that, well, we have God sussed. We know how God operates. If the men from the East had acted like that, they would never have left their homeland. Instead, the wise men proved they were indeed very wise. They dared to believe that there were things they didn't know. Things about life, the universe, and about the Almighty as well. And they allowed a star to take them on a journey, a journey of discovery, away from everything that was comfortable and familiar to them, to a foreign land, to find what they least expected. And that find then changed their lives forever. Oh, that we had the courage to be so wise.
Lord Jesus, you were born into a very real world, a world of pain and politics, a world of poverty and fear, a world slow to welcome you and quick to want rid of you. You come still into a very real world where people fail to recognize you or refuse to. You come still to a world where people suffer, children die, parents mourn, people fight and kill. And things happen that cannot be understood or explained away. Even when things seem at their darkest, may we trust that your hand still holds us and your world. In that faith, we give you thanks, Lord, for those who go out of their way to protect the weakest and the most vulnerable in the world. We give you thanks for those who care about the poorest and the most looked down upon. And we pray that they continue to be given the strength, the inspiration and the courage to keep living your love. We think particularly of those who go into war zones to help and to treat and to feed those whose lives, homes and communities have been shattered and who in so doing put their own lives at risk. Protect them and protect too, we pray, those whose daily reality is full of fear and threat and violence. Bring peace to this world, Lord Jesus, and bring it soon. And at the start of this new year, help us, we pray, to be as determined as the wise men from the East, to find you in the thick of this your world, committed to helping everyone to know both love and life. Then help us to do the same and to work with you, bringing hope to all for love's sake, so that our lives reflect yours. And in your name, so may this world broken find health and healing forever. All of this we ask in your name, Lord Jesus, the unexpected and surprising Saviour of all. Amen. <laughs>